We don't need massive sequences. Like, yeah, there's there's bears and wolves. It's big, but it's not impossibly big. We don't need the the monkeys, the 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 fucking atomic bombs launching refrigerators, the the five waterfalls. You can you can kind of simplify it a bit and give us some fun adventure, some good old fashioned fist fights, some good old fashioned chases, and we'll be happy as pie. And a, and a, a, the 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 story arc needs to be something that you don't just tell us what it is 25 minutes 20 minutes into the movie and the whole time we're wondering what it's going to be if it's actually going to be what you said and then at the end we're like oh that's that's exactly what it was okay aliens welcome to earth so uh any did you see any of the indiana jones besides kingdom of the crystal skull in the theater i didn't i was too young i mean i when did when did last crusade come out i think 89 yeah i think i was just too young yeah i'm an old piece of shit man i saw um I saw Temple of Doom and uh, Last Crusade in the theater. It That's, was you, oh, it was so amazing. I was young. How old were you when you saw Temple? So I was like seven, eight maybe okay. at most. And uh, yeah, my uncle John took me and my cousin Michael. And, um, I mean, it blew my mind. I had already seen Raiders, but it blew my mind. Okay, that's it, what I was going to ask if you saw Raiders yeah, first. Yeah, and we sat in a balcony in like a Brooklyn theater and just like, them eating the snakes at the same time and I re- I related to Short Round because he was in the Goonies and just like what an amazing theatrical experience. It's one of those that I, I it's like it, it's just burned into my memory. Isn't it crazy how Spielberg has that effect on everyone from for like 30 years? Like I feel like every kid their first their first films that are films. Like their first experiences watching a movie where they're like Holy shit, this is art and fun and crazy and amazing. It's Spielberg. My six-year-old is going through it right now. I went through it when I was whatever, eight or whatever, however old I was when Jurassic Park came out. Something like that, eight, I think, seven. And that movie was just like, what the fuck? Meow, 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 meow. I was like in. Spielberg has that effect. And I, so the only one I've seen, the only one I saw in the theater was Crystal Skull. But I remember the first time I saw Temple. I don't remember the first time I saw Ark. I, it, I'm sure I saw it at a time and was like, holy shit, this is amazing. But I've seen it 350 times since I first saw it. Yeah. But Temple, the first time I saw Temple, the heart ripping out sequence was like, I was like, I didn't know what to I was speechless like I am now. I was just like, what the fuck what did you What are you supposed to do? The villain just ripped the guy's heart out. The guy's still alive, and then he drops him into a vat of hot lava, and the heart goes on fire. How do you beat that? But so I, the first time I saw Temple was my cousin showed it to me, and when that happened, when that hard sequence happened, I was just like, fuck, I'm done. These are amazing. This is fantastic. And that was one of the first introductions to – I had seen Nightmare on Elm Street already because um, I saw that when I was like three years old or something like that. But that was like one of the first moments where I'm like, oh, my God, you can mix horror into adventure and it works. God, I love horror. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And and it's just like such a cool thing where you hear that they kind of made Temple of Doom so harsh because they were both going through like shitty divorces and they were angry. <laughs> oh, it's an angry movie. Oh, it's so yeah. angry. Yeah, it's like Spielberg and Lucas just firing on all cylinders like, fuck the world. We're going to rip hearts out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. That's amazing. If I wonder if that's true. That's such a cool story because there literally is a heart ripped out of someone. In yeah, I'm like, pretty it's like, sure it's it's part oh, of why they awesome. did all that stuff, man. So. Oh, that's great. I can't wait to show my I, my six year old hasn't seen any of them except for Ark, And I can't wait. A temple is the one that I'm just like, yeah, so amped to show him. We're, um, we're of the same mindset. I like that. I like this. This has been a great time, man. This has been an awesome time, and I can't wait for everyone to write in telling us where we're right, where we're wrong, why they love us, and why they hate us. I hope they do, and I hope they didn't tune out like 10 minutes in and be like, these guys are so annoying. I don't want to ever listen to their voices again. Oh, they all did. Well, they're, no, they, it wasn't that. They were all just finished right away, banging or, or jerking, and they were like, uh, I'm going to go do something oh else Oh, my instead. God. Imagine somebody out there has been fucking this whole time like marathon fucking oh my God. to this whole thing and just like thrusting and like you know taking breaks to like kind of finger blast the booty hole or whatever but they're still fucking from the beginning oh if, if that happened if, mikey mike mikey get this guy a trophy <laughs> the guy who's been fucking the whole time oh, i'll tell you later mikey 
Or if it's a couple of hot lesbians talking about the Lilith fair. Oh, we got oh. to Lilith and they got all hot and bothered. Oh, God, I'm, I'm going to explode. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, dude, this has been great. I can't wait to do more. Um, to I guess to let the audience know out there, hit us up on social media. Hit us up on at Escalator Pitch across all the boards. Uh, you could find Josh at at Flush Studios. Is that right? Yep, or on most of the stuff, it's at Flush Studios or at Josh Stifter. And uh, he also has a Patreon. Go check out the Patreon. There's a lot of awesome behind-the-scenes stuff that Josh does. And, uh, yeah, he's just a really impressive guy. And then you can also find me at Bad Techno, where I'm doing my stupid stuff pretty much across the board. And then if you want to email us any pitches, it's escalatorpitchpodcast at gmail.com. We want to hear from you. We want to hear your Indiana Jones ideas. We want to hear your Rainbow Bright, your Care Bear ideas. We love the Care Bears, and we need a sequel. I would love, I would fucking love a Care Bear pitch. If they can get us with a Care Bear pitch, and I'm like, dude, I want to see that fucking movie. Yeah, like the Lord of the yes. Rings type yes. Care Bear movie. Holy oh, shit. I, want... I don't know what it is. I have no idea. That's for you guys to figure out. You guys pitch me the Care Bear movie, and if I I, I hope you can blow my mind. I, that's what I want. Now that's the only thing I, I want in life. The main goal of this thing is to get somebody, even if it's not us, we're going to get somebody to get paid for a pitch. Hell yeah. Well... That's it for us. Uh, but before we go, we have one final thing. Linking the Indiana Jones with the Quincy Jones. We're going to leave them off with a song. What do you think? Let's do it. Let's do it. I want to hear this song. This is called Full Blown Quincy Jones. We'll see you <laughs> motherfuckers next time. See you motherfuckers next time. See you next time. Richard Pryor and Marlon Brando licked each other's booty holes. We're going full blown Quincy Jones. We're letting everybody know why. Richard Pryor and Paul and Brando licked each other's booty holes, yeah. We're going full-blown Quincy Jones. We're letting everybody in the whole world know. Richard Pryor and Paul and Brando licked each other's booty holes, yeah. Licked each other's booty holes, yeah. We're going full-blown, full, full, full blown, blown Quincy Jones.